Hi everyone, welcome to another Groovy Golf video. As you can see, we're not on the course today. We're actually in my garage, and from the title of the video, you know what I've done? I've built myself a simulator. So the special thing about this one is, we still wanted to get the cars in the garage, so I couldn't leave it up all the time, so I've made it completely retractable. We can be pushed up against the back wall. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a bit of a rundown about what I've used, uh, how it's all put together, how much this actually cost me. I'll hit a few balls as well, just to show you how it looks, but first, Let's just have a little quick time lapse to show you how long it actually takes me to get this thing set up and ready to hit balls. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long to get this whole set up and ready to hit balls. So let me give you a bit of a rundown about what I've used, how I've all put it together, and how much this actually costs. So, so as you might have been able to see what I've brought everything out, there's three wires that go from the back of the garage to the front. Now they're just uh, wires that you'd find on a like a balcony balustrade or something like that. So for the three of them, it was just one long length, and I bought a couple of um, couple of turnbuckles to, to connect it to the wall. So all that, that was only 20 bucks for that for that stuff. Um, holding up all the, the netting and the, the impact screen, I've just got the, just got carabiners. So um, I forget how many in the pack that I bought, but that, that was $20 off Amazon. Um, so the netting, the netting is actually, there's three pieces to the netting. They're each three meters by three meters. And um, so they're held on by the, the carabiners um, and they were $250. Now, the mat and the impact screen, I got them together uh, from Kays and Golf, who, who were really good. Um, they actually had a discount if you bought the two together. And also, the mat was on, on back order, so there was a bit more of a discount there as well. So, the mat was $380, uh, and the impact screen was $325. Um, and, yeah, they, they were great, Kays and Golf. So, uh, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check them out. Uh, talking about the mat, um, it's actually uh, it's thick enough that you can put a, put a tee in. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about there later because I have to do something special for the, for the tees. But um, so then the, the fabric that goes around around the outside, uh, that's just uh, curtain curtain fabric. It's just one long length. It's 1.8 meters wide and, and nine meters long, and that's just draped draped over the top. Um, it has restricted the when I when I bring out the netting. I have to give a little bit extra tug because it does get bunched up, but um, but it works really well. I didn't have that before. Uh, and the two, you can see the two lights there, right above the screen. It really took away the the, the image um, from the projector. So putting that up made made a massive difference, and that was just fifty dollars as well. So now um, on the ground behind me, we just got some artificial grass. That's actually four strips that are a meter meter wide and three meters long. So and I've just taped them together. As you can see, I just I just roll it up. Uh, up against the wall, uh, so that was that was a hundred dollars. Originally, I didn't have that as well. When I was first testing it, I was hitting hitting some balls in there, and then just having it on the concrete, the balls were just getting all scuffed up. So I needed something there. So that works really well. So all together, everything I've mentioned there so far is all you need just for a simulator to hit to hit or a, an area to hit balls in, not turn it into a simulator. So just that, if you just want to practice and hit balls, so that was altogether one thousand one hundred forty five dollars. All right, so turning it into a simulator, um, little extra things needed there. So for the launch monitor, I got the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, uh, which just came out. Uh, that's That was $1,100. Now the projector, uh, I did have like a, an old projector I sort of, I had laying around and I, I put that up there, but that just wasn't good enough. It wasn't giving me a big enough screen or the, um, the, the brightness that I needed. So um, I got a, the projector I got is actually an Asus. So it's a it's actually a gaming uh, projector. I got that on sale actually. That was usually sixteen hundred dollars, and I got it for a thousand dollars. So um, pretty good deal there. It's a short throw projector, so I have it closer. If I had any other projector, I'd probably have to put it back a bit, and it, it might have um, might have had some some issues with the the garage door motor, um, but that seems to work really well. Um, and the tablet, so I got a, bought a new tablet, so I got a Samsung Galaxy S seven. Um, that was seven hundred dollars. Um, connecting it to projector, I got the, I got a HDMI cable 
that um, connects right on it was 10, 10 meters of HDMI cable, that was $30. And then I've got a tripod to, to hold the tablet, so that was $20. So if you add all that up together, it comes to $3,995, so just, just under $4,000. And um, so I'm really, really happy about that. I wasn't sure how much this was going to cost me when I when I got into it. I didn't think I was going to have to, to fork out um, as much as I did for the projector um, and a few other a few other things. So um, I'm pretty happy with that price. You know, I think something similar that's a, a permanent one. You know, you're probably paying over you know six, seven, eight thousand dollars. We're talking Australian here. So um, so I'm pretty happy with that, and it, it fits in nicely. It, it, Everything sort of worked the way that I wanted it to work, so so I was really happy with that. Um, I'll give you something about the mat. So I said it's big enough to put a T in. I had to do something special with the T though, so let me just go and get that. So with the mat, when you do put a T in, it works really well. It sits up at the right height, but when you hit it, the T just flies off in, in any random direction. So I've, I've lost three T's somewhere in the garage. I don't know where they are. But what I've done to fix that is actually, I've got one of these blue T's. This seems to be the right height uh, in the mat for, for the driver, which I'll be using it for. And I've just got a, a steel washer and I've got some fishing line. I've just tied that, tied them together. I stick the washer underneath the mat with enough enough uh, space to, to get the tee in. And then when I hit it, the tee just stays where it is. So so that works really well. I'm not sure if there's a, uh, a product out there very similar that you can use, but if you do have a simulator and you, you have that sort of issue, maybe this is the, this is the solution, so. Okay, so really nothing left to talk about. So uh, let's hit some balls. Hey guys, just interrupting here because I've packed, started to pack everything up and realized I forgot to mention something, that everything that's involved in this simulator here is all separated. So if something happens to one of the nets, I can take that down without any other things having been taken down. Same with the impact screen. The only thing is if I had to do something with the wires, I'd have to take a few things off, but everything else is all separate. So it's a lot easier if something does go wrong, I can just take one thing out and replace it with another. Back to it. All right, so here we go. We're on the uh, Rapsoda range here. Uh, uh, haven't any balls yet, so we'll see how we go. I've uh, got a 9-iron. Really, I'm sort of looking at uh, 1, 130, 125 to 130 metres. All right, so here we go. Bit of a draw, I think. It's turning a little bit. What do we end up with? One, 26, yeah, all right. Um, but these are things I want to start to really understand, like these ball speeds, club speeds, smash factors, spin access, all that sort of stuff. Really get into all my clubs and, and, um, and just see what their numbers are and uh, really delve into that and see where I need to improve. Pretty good. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but there's a little red laser that I've got set up here for my ball. That's actually a, um, a special stand that I've got for the Rapsoda to help with my alignment. Uh, 125, that's all right, but I'll do a separate, I'm gonna do another video on the Rapsoda uh, and I'll include the stand in on that. But um, what was that, 125? Yeah, okay, seems to be all right. Well, Whitley's pretty good. So I just, uh, I want to understand these better, these club head speeds and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to work. I'll probably do a series of videos just on, on each club. See what they do, 129. Yeah, okay, look, I'm really happy with that. I think I might actually um, change the speeds. I'll keep the distances as meters because that's what we work on here in Australia. But I think with the the club head speeds and all that, I'll probably change them to miles, miles an hour. Uh, I think that's just what, what I'm used to seeing and hearing when they talk about club head speeds for certain clubs and things like that. So I might actually change that to miles, to see if that helps. That was definitely a draw. There it goes, a little bit. Uh, I tend, I think I'm starting to get a little bit of a draw here because I'm a bit, conscious of the uh the follow-through even though it's fine there's no problem with it at all high ceilings you know nothing in the way it's still a little bit in my head so 
I'll see if I can uh, get over that. Oh yeah, and if anyone's got any tips about long lasting gloves, let me know. I've been using this for about a week and a half and I had a brand new glove and it's pretty much already disintegrated. So with the amount I'm gonna be using this, I'm gonna be going through them like there's no tomorrow. So if you've got any tips for a really good long lasting glove, let me know. Yeah, so some of the videos I'm thinking about is uh, just a video for each club, just going through each club. Working on its distance, just to get that in my head, to know what I'm hitting. But also, like especially um, my short game with my wedges, you know, try and, try and work out a, a system, you know, like maybe like a, a clock thing, you know, nine, 10, 11, to get my distances in, maybe get a bit more feel for how far, you know, those sort of 40, 50, 60 meter pitches need to go. So that's where I'm gonna be working a lot. So we've warmed up now. So you're really working on like that sort of launch angle. See how the, the launch angle and club head speed, ball speed, see how that all sort of works together to get my, get my distances. Because I do have a very high ball flight. So that's probably where that launch angle, if I can drop that, let's see if we can do this one. I'll bring my hands forward, see if I can lower this one. So 24.1. Okay, it's going to be lower, 19.9, but uh, yeah, I did drag across it. What's the distance there? What's the difference? Ball speed's about the same, club head's about the same. Let's see, look at that, 135. Just dropping that launch angle by, by a few degrees, get a lot more carry, so something to work on. That's what I'm going to be working on, hitting a lot of balls. That was a real toey. You can see how yeah, that ball speed's down with that toe hit. Launch angle is higher. But yeah, just not getting that good strike, 124. All right, so I think you can get ready for a lot more videos now. I'm, um, I'm gonna be using this a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll probably do some simulations, uh, play some rounds here, um, but also, just working on the clubs, working on my swing, you know, using the technology I have here now with the Rap Soto and and uh, and other you know multiple cameras and things like that. Yeah, that's probably ooh, I like that shot. All right. So anyway, so there's that's my new simulator. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, let me know if you think of any improvements I could make, or if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.